it's Stephanie from Janku. I'm back to show you PenPot. It's my new favorite design tool. Um, it's open source and it's actually still in beta, but we've been using it in Janku for some of our uh, design comps and some of our wireframes. So let me uh, just show you around. I'm gonna click the hamburger icon and I'm gonna log in. I already have an account. You can sign up for a free account. Um, but I already have one, so let's sign in. Okay, so right now I was, I am working on a portfolio site. Um, let's open the portfolio site, take a look. Okay, so you'll notice I have two artboards open. I'll get to what that is. But first, let me explain some of the very simple elements of PenPot. So you can see that I've mocked up a simple, very simple website um, explaining who I am and some of my interests. And um, I've done this by using the elements on the side. So you can select this tool right here for the to move different objects on the screen. Um, this is the artboard, which I'll be getting to later. And then there's this rectangular out icon, which you can use for anything. I, I use it for uh, picture placement, um, for just like the sections of the website with the different colors, the footer. Um, so let me show you. Um, you could just click and drag, and you can create a rectangle, square, uh, whatever size you need. And then on the right side of the panel where it says design, you can change the um, the different parts of the uh, rectangle or the square by uh, let's say you want to make round edges you can go over to this section and you can enter let's say 10 and oops let's try that again hit enter and you'll notice a little bevel on the edges you can even just do one one of the corners as a uh, um, with a rounded corner. Um, so there's there's a lot of different things to play with. This is just going to be a brief overview. As you can see, I just actually rotated this a little bit because I was using the scroll and I increased this number here. Um, but this is just, you know, you can add a stroke, which is the border around the object. You can add a drop shadow. You can add a blur, blurs around the edges of the shape. And there's this export shape. Okay, so that's just a quick overview of this uh, rectangle tool. Then there's the ellipse tool. And it's the same deal. You can hold down shift, which keeps the um, proportions um, like as a perfect circle and the same thing with a rectangle you can hold down shift and it'll keep the proportions to that of a square so the ellipse has a uh, similar design um, design properties uh, one thing I didn't cover here is this these are the align um, sections so if you wanted to align let's say the circle and the square to the top um, you can come over here and say align top and they will both align to the top. Uh, let's continue. So you can rotate the circle, you can uh, change the size, you can click the lock icon to keep the same um, dimensions, maybe increase or decrease uh, the size. Uh, you can change the colors with the fill. Um, there's, they also provide you these different uh, tools for selecting the colors. Uh, and then these here, right here, are the recent colors that you've been playing with. So it'll start storing all the colors. Uh, let's see, there's a stroke. You can add a stroke, which is just, the, again, the border. Um, you can increase the size of that line by just increasing the number where it's under under the stroke um, color. You can add, increase the pixels. Um, you can do it on the inside, outside of the circle, and you can make dotted or dashed or mixed 
um, different features. So uh, the point of this video today is not really to get into the weeds of what each of these things are. I could probably do that in future videos. Right now I just want to show you uh, what this program is capable of. So you have a lot of functionality there. You have uh, text. So you can just type in some text, you can change the sizes, you can change the colors of the text, um, you can create shad drop shadow, you have different options for that. Um, blur, there's the different fonts, you can import fonts that are not here. Um, let me select that again. So every time I select an item on the canvas, I can go to the right panel, the design panel, and I can select all the different properties. Um, you can see the align left, align center, um, even has like uh, some letter spacing or kerning um, options here, so a lot of good stuff. All right, let's move on. Image. This is obviously, you can just upload an image. This is if you would like to draw your own objects. You can also create polygons um, in different shapes. And it also allows you to curve. This is very similar to the Bezier tool in Inkscape. And then there's a comments um, button, which you, I believe you can only see the comments when you have selected the comments bubble area. So for example, if I put a comment here and I say, hi, this is a comment, and then I post, it will leave a one there. But once I get, I leave this bubble, it disappears. I can only see the comments when I've selected comments to go back. Also know that the comments do not follow um, the individual um, different shapes that you have on the page. So if I were to move this rectangle, that comment would not move with it. It's, it stays wherever you place in the page. Now, if you want to move it, um, I'm not, you might be able to move it. I'm not clear on that, but it doesn't seem like you can move it. All right, now layers. Layers are the, um, so basically every time you add a different object on the page, doesn't matter what it is, text, rectangles, circles, anything that you add. So let's say I add this circle and then the next thing I add is a square. The square will automatically be on top of the circle. That is, that is how the program manages to do layers. Now you can change which layer these two objects are in. So right now the circle is below the square. If I want the square below the circle, I can, there's two ways to do it. I can right click, I can send backward or send back, and that will just send it right behind the circle, or I can come here and this is a list of all the items on the page and where they are in accordance to each other in the layers. So you can see that the layer is above the rectangle right now, but if I just click the circle and drag below the rectangle, you'll notice that they've changed. All right. Now let's, let's move on. Assets are really cool. What they allow is, especially if you're working in a team and you wanna reuse certain components on your page over and over again without having to recreate it, you can go, let's say, I want to make this little box that, that uh, signifies a picture. I can make this a component that can be reused. So I'm going to create a component and right there it just creates it you can you can rename it I do that in the layers so it creates this um, little hexagonal shape and um, 
this blue highlight and I can just go, you know, picture placeholder or something like that. So then when you go into assets, oh, it just says that's in group 13, I suppose, but you can just drag it over and it's just, it's just a super easy way to continue using uh, different assets. You can also edit these assets, so it doesn't have to be the same size. Okay, and then um, along with having this file library, it's pretty cool. You can add graphics, you can add the color scheme. So again, if you're working in a group especially, they can just go here and you know use the colors that um, you've decided for that website or whatever you're designing. Um, the different typographies, the fonts that you've chosen to be the style guide, all can go in here. This is the history button, so basically you can go back and see uh, what you've done and undo things. Um, and then the color palette, which is showing me all the colors on the page currently or in the art space. Okay, so that's just a brief overview. Now one thing I skipped was the artboard. The artboard is a very powerful tool in this program because what it does is it allows you to interact um, with the different components you have. So let's show an example here. Um, so right now I have this artboard, but let's say I'm going just to copy these items. And I'm going to paste them here. All right, there we go. And right now it doesn't have an artboard. You can draw the artboard first or you can draw it after. It does not matter, but what you do is you select it. And then you go and select everything you want to be on the artboard. So you'll notice the artboard got named to three because there's two existing ones. And then now what you do with this, this is, this is the power of this, is um, you go to prototype. So not the design tab, the prototype tab. And if you want to, let's say you're showing a client how to um, you know, if I click hi there, it should go to another page. And right now I don't have another page to show you, so I'm just going to show you what I have here. But let's say I click hi there, and I want it to display the next page, which is a grayed out hi there. I'm going to click on hi there. This green arrow is going to pop up. I'm going to click, drag it over. And what that's going to do is when I click this arrow button, view mode, it's going to open another tab and it's going to show me a interactive web page. So now you can see this is clickable. If I click it, it goes right to the gray page. So there's a lot more that you can do with this program. and. I'm not going to go into any more today, but I plan on making more videos. I really love PenPot, and um, I hope after you try it, you love it too. Feel free to ask questions below. I'll be trying to post these weekly, and uh, I look forward to exploring PenPot with you. Thanks.